Yes, I am Malik. Um, and my project is called Tower for One Night. Now we start with the trailer. Um. Power for one night. Bill's diary. Istanbul, October 22. Felt a stab of desire and regret during my evening walk yesterday when I thought of the romantic adventures I did not live. All the lovers I did not have, all the desires and dreams held back. So much time wasting and empty headedness in their ultimate exalted forms. Now that I'm thinking with age and sorrow, how I regret not going out, not seeing so many great men and being seen by them. State of excitement in the afternoon. I sat on the balcony and watched the swimmers. They looked like Apollo, Mars, Jupiter, Adonis, Hercules, Narcissus, etc. I saw the structure of bones, the origins of muscles in so many different natural and noble positions and poses. Then I began with the preparations for the night. Many are invited. They will fall in love at the tower. Everything will be set for them to take hands, curtsy and kiss. No more tears, except for those new unforeseeable calls to stream by joy. I will be there in the crowd and I leave the city for good the day after. Orlando's letter. Cher Maman, in Istanbul, I discovered something far more exciting than the bazaars that are so crowded with loyal sightseers. A swimming club, exactly to my liking. I met a man called Columbus at the pool. Believe me, nature does not produce so easily for us such a perfect body with a harmony that nothing may be added, taken away or altered, but for the worse. And he was covered with oil, with the finest Attic oil. I could not get my eyes off him. I was just staring the whole time, like a person 
who after admiring the splendid portal of the temple is led up to the highest part of it, where its vault, which he cannot survey completely, astonished him anew. And he returned my gaze. Mother, I was shaking all over and slipped on the marble floor. For him, I would cross country after country, sea after sea, and on and on to the ends of the earth. And now I come every day and lay by the pool, discuss politics in French or Turkish poetry in my cabin, and wait for him. Your dearest, Orlando. Intercolumnium of flirts. Pushing the door open, Columbus said to himself, tonight, all of life is alive, vibrating and pulsating. He could feel the taste and odor of the tobacco smoke making its way through his throat and nose. Not knowing where to go, he kept moving among the shadowy figures. It was as if Columbus could kiss every mouth, gaze at every face. Fatala stood before one of the massive columns and Columbus stared at him, his mouth open. Feeling bold impulses, he walked over. Oh, I love your black and white outfit, as well as those killer dip dye ends with the matching lipstick in, in red. Surely a lipstick that lets you kiss. I am as sensitive about giving a refusal as the receiving one, and my eyes show it, but you're just not my type, said Fatale, turning his head. And Columbus was shocked. Shame and confusion troubled him sorely. He stumbled, found hold on the column, glided around it, and bumped into Femme on the other side. Oh, you surprised me, exclaimed Femme. Noses almost touching, they shouted their names over the music. Femme said, You are, cried Flores. You need not shake your head. You know you are. Columbus, cheeks inflamed by the flattery, were as red and round as two cherries. But do plushes? Have I spoken unspokable things? Orlando, black lipstick and red eyeshadow, his crop top, soaked in sweat, looked up at Bill. You who know all the secrets of life, tell me how to charm Columbus to love me. I want to make Romeo jealous. I want the dead lovers of the world to hear our laughter and grow sad. I want the breath of our passion to stir the dust into consciousness, to wake their ashes into pain. Bill said, the most spectacular conquests are bathed only in sweat, tears, and blood before disappearing into the crowd. Columbus, leaning against the column over Femme's shoulder, recognized Orlando. Their eyes met and said to each other those obscure and ineffable things which the glance lisps. Orlando whispered, I looked for you all over the city. Later, Orlando recounted to Bill, his eyes met mine like those traveling skies on stormy days, which approach a slower cloud, touch it, overtake it, pass it. Lovers spit stare. Columbus hurried ahead, taking two stairs at a time. They faced each other silently in front of the niche. Will he or will I or won't be after all? Was Orlando thinking, her sister, solitary, uneasy in suspense. Through the open window, he saw fairies gliding over the black waters of the Bosporus and in the background of the quay, the endlessly stretching lights of the city. From the lower stairs, they heard footsteps and a heavy breathing of somebody coming closer. In the moment before their intimacy was to be disturbed, Columbus took Orlando's hand and they slid together into the niche. Orlando felt a feathery wind br brushing across his temples, producing a shiver. He heard the roaring of the waves and the soft noise of the wind blowing. The air was filled with the smell of the sea. Columbus bent over Orlando with an intense stare and said, How hot your hands in my heart impel. Feel my cheek as I feel yours. This night is ours. And now, little sweetheart, come and kiss me. They stood there, lip against lip, tongue against palate, teeth touching teeth, closed eyelids, a hand clenched into a fist, fingers pressed against each other, 
the back of one tie crossed over the front of the other and one foot resting on the other until the kiss came to a lingering and breathless end. I am drunk on that kiss, said Orlando. In a short moment of solitude at the tower, he wrote in his diary, a kiss makes you forget everything. Feast for the eye. Orlando pressed himself against the window, panting. I feel all wet, he mumbled. A thin froth of salvia trickled down his lower lip. He was scanning the people walking up and down the quay, illuminated by the giant beacon, beacon of the lighthouse. There was particularly one young man he could not get his eyes off. Orlando stared, trembled, turned hot, turned cold, longed to hurl himself through the summer air and exclaimed, Look at the strong white parabola of his jaw and the working Adam's apple. Keep the light fixed on him a little bit, would you, Bill? His mouth remained hanging open on the word. Great drops of sweat sprang out on his forehead, and his breath came in broken gasps. I would kiss him and shake him. He watched the man take off his jacket, and it was still very hot in Istanbul in the evening at this time of the year. And turned towards Bill, he said, I'm very hungry now. Bill, trying to hide his laughter, responded, Then try the oysters. Here's a delicious fat one, dear, said Bill. Try him. Do only this one. What a delicious thing is an oyster, remarked Orlando after having swallowed the repulsive and slippery and hard to grasp thing. Sweet hide and seek. Bill, one, two, three. Everybody raced off into different directions. The heels of Angry's heavy leather boots hit on the stone floor of the hall and made a great noise. Adrenaline kicked in. She reached for a door and stomped down the spiral staircase. She felt that she was not alone in the dark. On the other end of the room, there was a rustling and then Columbus whispered, anybody here? It's me, what do you want? replied Angry. A few minutes. They remained silent. Suddenly the clouds shifted and the moonlight poured into the room. And in the moment of greatest intensity, they stared at each other. Columbus silver nail polish reflected the moonlight. What's the matter? asked Angry. Columbus started crawling towards her and arrived, his bodysuit all dusty and wet. Your beauty makes this world a feasting presence full of light, he whispered. Ho, ho, I have to laugh, answered Angry, and slipped her arms, all dripping with sweat, under his. Shh, I can hear Bill's footsteps on the stairs, said Columbus. Now kiss me, little fool, said Angry, heart pounding. Kiss in the dark and never tell, whispered Columbus in response and leaned forward. Angry felt her feet above the ground, her head in heaven. Honey and milk are under thy tongue. I want your naked body, your skin, your mouth, your hands, she exclaimed, his back, his shoulder blade under her fingers, her mouth on his. And balcony of Romeo. Holland and Columbus overlooked the swimming pool. The aroma of roasted coffee and freshly baked bread made their muscles and skin quiver with delight. Bill joined them carrying a tablet with shot glasses filled with a white shiny liquid. Makes you feel young, he proclaimed. Everybody waved to the fishermen on their boats in the sunrise with its flaring spokes of light. And then the first swimmers arrived. Yeah, this was the presentation. This is my, uh, this is my blog. Is it? And I have all the texts and images there.